Let me get my thing here. All right, ready? It... <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, like, wait, you said Twitch will begin scanning and deleting clips that contain copyrighted music? I think it's kind of the thing, same thing. They can talk about oh, the yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah, people yeah. are literally, like, deleting to all the clips on their channels because they're scared of getting strikes. Like, it's getting pretty serious. Jeesh. All right. Yeah. Oh, let's get it done. <clears throat> Three, right. two. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Peripheral Podcast, episode two. My name is Grant, and here is my co-host Brian. Yo, what is going on, guys? It's your boy Brian. You know yes, it is. We've got a lot of interesting <laughs> topics to talk about today. You know, for sure. Currently um, under a DDoS attack, but it's all good. Hey, aren't we all? Apparently. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, so we're gonna be talking about some gaming news, sometimes reviews on latest games and media today. Um, some, a lot of stuff happened. It's been, it's kind of been kind of noisy and kind of quiet these past few, this past week or two. Um, but like one of the big things that happened was the, uh, the PS5 reveal event. Um, showing off a lot of games and some of the details about the console. Um, and I, I think it's kind of weird how they opened up. I'm not sure how much you watched it. I didn't watch the entire thing, but I, I watched some highlights of it. Um, was the, um, the first thing they showed off was like GTA 5. <laughs> That they're re-releasing it again. That's kind of insane, bro. The game, the game literally came out in like 2013, did it not? It's like that. Know. Like it was for like Xbox 360 and PS3. Like, yeah, like literally five years ago, and it's being re-released on back-to-back -back consoles, right? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. So let's see. It came out, insane. came out originally on Xbox 360 and PS3, and then it re-released on the PC like a year later. I think yeah. it did alongside the Xbox One and PS4 editions. And now here they go again, re-releasing re re it for the uh, the PS5. That uh, just it was such a weird opening. I think it's just kind of that's kind of insane, know. bro. Like, yeah. why would you put that like in the middle of your like, or, like the beginning of your reveal? Essentially, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, that isn't. Yeah, if anything, I would put that like somewhere in the middle of, of you know amongst like all their kind of reveals. Yeah. Be like, oh yeah, by the way. GTA 5, and then it's like, all right, bro, next game. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, nonetheless, that's going to be coming. I don't know who's going to buy it. If you don't have it already, like, I think we talked about GTA 5 last last time, last episode because it yeah. was on a Epic Game Store for free. So if you haven't got it yet, then I guess you can get for PS5 if you'd like. But, I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I can't really justify buying a game I've already bought, you know, once or twice already now. Yeah, but, I don't, I don't get it, bro. If they're gonna re-release it, they may as well re-release it for free because they literally just released it for free again. So it's like, yeah. what or like doing? release it like with like a you know mass discount, like you know I'm playing full sixty dollars or something like that. Like I'd pay like twenty max because you're you're really buying yourself an upgrade. Um, yeah. But I think the next the next uh, thing they announced was pretty cool. It was uh, the new Spider-Man Miles Morales game. Um, See, I heard about that too. Yeah, there was a lot of hype. Yeah, I really? didn't play the original Spider-Man for PS4. It's like my list to play. Um, but I think with all the hype from uh, uh, Into the Spider-Verse, I think it kind of like pushed for this uh, to come out. It looks really cool. Like like from like the visuals, I know it's a cinematic trailer, but like it's, it's visuals yeah. are pretty cool looking. Now, yeah, I saw it and I was like, yo, this actually doesn't look bad. Like I know the last Spider-Man game came out like maybe like two years ago or something like that. But yeah. uh, this new one is actually, like, I don't know how they do it, bro. Like, it just feels like, like, there are, like there's so many, like, titles that re-release. Or not re-release. There's so many titles that release, and then, like, their gameplay just looks pretty, like, similar to the last game. But with Spider-Man, they're always adapting it. It, seems, it feels like. So, like, yeah, kind of hype for it. Did you play the original one or no? No. Nah. Like, wait, what console? It was PS4. Oh, oh, oh. Hell no. No, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> so I, I need didn't... more games. I know, man. That's like my thing. Like, I always get buy a lot of. I have like, so many games in my Steam library I have not played yet. And on my yeah. PS4, I haven't played a lot of games in there. Like, I think the most recent thing I beat on my PS4 was the God of War game. And I'll talk about the last. Um, yeah. But. Oh, well. But this game looks kind of cool. I think the. Uh, so, the, a lot of people were kind of expecting this was like an expansion pack for um, the original Spider Man game, but it's. Nope, the uh, creator came out and said it's actually going to be a full-on new experience for uh, for PS5. So that's pretty dope. Um, uh, I think there were, I think I saw there was a thing in, in uh, the original Spider-Man game. There's an Easter egg where you can find Miles Morales 
and now he's a he's Spidey. Facts. That's pretty, pretty dope. That is pretty um, dope. Next thing, I mean, I'm I'm not a racing fan, but I know people who there's people who are. Uh, Gran Turismo Seven is coming out for PS Five. Bro, um, I feel like there's always another Gran Turismo coming out. Like, <laughs> like if whenever there's announcements, like you know, like you know for sure, this they're gonna be like, "All right, bro, Gran Turismo." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like here you go. Yeah, I mean, I've seen like, I've seen like esports e clips for the for Gran Turismo, and I mean, I mean, if you're really into it, I'm guessing that's really cool. Like, you know, having the whole like racing wheel set up and all that fun stuff, but. Bro, I don't no know, cap, racing bro. games are just for, for me. I just I've, I've tried like the only racing game I like is like Mario Kart. <laughs> it's the only like I really right. like because right. that's just like simple. Yeah, exactly. The parties, the party racers are like the my kind of go to from any kind of racing game. Uh, I've watched um, what's it call it esports for like Forza in the mm -hmm. past and whatnot, and like bro, it actually like the setups on like the like the whole like land, like you know before obviously COVID. Like the setups on land were pretty uh, elite, bro. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't a lot of, there wasn't like a big, like viewing of like their uh, other scene. I don't know why. I guess it's not a big fan base, but the setup is pretty nasty, bro. Like yeah. Like you have, have you have all these guys on land, like in these like you know these bunkers, like hitting it, <laughs> and it's not yeah. like an arcade. It's like. It's like, you know, obviously like a setup with a better response time than like an of arcade, course, yeah. but yeah, it's actually pretty nasty, bro. Like watching it, like I, I kind of wish it was a bigger audience, but you know, honestly, I think if we're gonna be, if we're gonna keep it real, bro, you might as well just make it NASCAR 2K or something. <laughs> like, like that's the only way, you're, that's the only way you're gonna get like America's attention. Cause if you put like Forza, Gran Turismo, like, People, it's gonna have an audience that is gonna keep coming back, obviously, but it's not gonna be like, wow, look at this game. You know what I'm saying? Like a Rocket League right. or something. So, I mean, we'll just see what happens, right? Yeah, Always for sure. Adapting. I mean, I think there was a thing like earlier, like during COVID, like, uh, I don't know what they're doing now, but I think like they had just like a, they had NASCAR, but it was like the video game NASCAR as like yeah. the place of it. So, I mean, let me talk about this last time, like esports could be really rising up in this, in this point. Um, because of you know COVID, um, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like almost every game now has like kind of an esport to it. You know, like there's a whole esports esports scene around like FIFA and Madden and um, 2K. You know. Yeah. It's kind I of. Mean, I mean, it's interesting. Esports e prolongs the life of a video game, which is really really good. You know, because uh, yeah. ultimately that'll equal more sales for the developer. That'll equal more like content around the mm -hmm. game and. And, and like the game ultimately like sells itself, you know what I'm saying? With esports, yeah. So there's always sure. an audience that's like guaranteed, as long as there's developer support. Uh, <laughs> Nintendo, please. But <laughs> it is what it is, bro. Um, I think what's it called? I saw one game that looked kind of like an esport right at the PS5 reveal. And I don't remember the name of it, but I tweeted it. Hang on, I'm gonna look at my tweets real quick. It was like during the weekend, right? Um, trying to look here through all of them. Was it the uh, Destruction All Stars? Maybe. Yes. Okay. Yes, Destruction All Stars. That game looked like, like imagine like weapons in like a, a racing game. That game is disgusting, bro. That I was like, bro, that has to be an esport. There's no way it's not. Oh yeah, I remember, I remember this now. It kind of looked like a little bit like Rocket League at first, or uh, yeah. Dang, bro, you really guessed this? it, bro. Yeah, I was just kind of I was looking at the list of names and stuff. I'm like, that's probably what it is. <laughs> yes, um, dude. I mean, it might be cool. I mean, it's important if I've seen like those small videos and might be pretty dope. <laughs> um, yeah, it would be pretty dope. Yeah. But we'll see about that. Um, so the next thing after uh, Grand Turismo Seven, I mean, I never played Ratchet and Clank. But I know a lot of people really love that game. I played in it. The series. Um, so they announced their, I don't know how many, which which number this is, but it's the Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Um, and it's kind of cool because it kind of shows like the power of the PS5 and like next gen technology. Yeah. Like how they're just completely oh, immediately loading new worlds, like with different backgrounds and backdrops just instantly, you know? Yeah, just matching kind of, up that graphics card. Yeah, it basically just matching out the, the SSD on that thing. And yeah, yeah it's. It's, it looks pretty cool. Like, I, like, I never played Ratchet and Clank, so there's not like a lot of nostalgia factor for me in that. But uh, I yeah. have a little bit of history. So, like you before, I, yeah, before I got into 
competing in COD. Like I was actually like, I played a shit ton of like Ratchet and Clank on PS2, like multiplayer. So like, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's weird cause like, I didn't even think about it as a competitive. I thought it was like, I'm playing against other people online and it's kind of fun, right? But yeah, dude, it's, dude, it's elite. Like, I don't know if they're gonna have a multiplayer for this game. I seriously doubt it. They're probably just focusing on cinematics from what I can see. But I mean, it's still, like from my childhood, it's still a pretty good game, you know. Yeah. So it's something I could probably pick up. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm I'm probably gonna end up getting PS5 eventually. I don't know if I'm gonna get like when it first comes out. Because yeah. I mean, a lot of these games are coming out like are launch titles, for the most yeah. part. Yeah. So. Bro, this shit's gonna be expensive, bro. Like. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Like they didn't show they didn't even show the price too. Dude, but, yeah, that's mad sketchy. Like neither of them showed their prices. They're just like, wait on it. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll well, see. there was a uh, there wasn't a late a leaked on Am- on Amazon of the price in the UK or some store. Yeah. In the UK, it was like six hundred six hundred pounds or euros. I don't know the difference. Um, six hundred pounds of euro. So either one of those euros? two. Six hundred euros. I, like, I can't remember what the symbol it was, but probably six hundred pounds. Damn, that's almost seven hundred dollars. Uh... Yeah, that's not right. They're saying like they, 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 somebody came and said, yeah, that's not right. <laughs> Oh, I did. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a cancel there, but who knows, like, you know, if that's right or not. Like, like, oh, just kidding. <laughs> you know, I mean, you never know what they're gonna say because I know there's like this whole thing of. And here's the thing, I remember there's people saying like, there's there's not gonna be a lot of they're not gonna be able to put out as many consoles as they did with the PS4 because of a uh, supply shortage. You know? Yeah. I kind of don't buy that. <laughs> um, just For based real? on the fact because like I think that's gonna be that's mainly like a, a marketing tactic. You know, like oh, well, if you better if you wanna get yours immediately, you better pre-order it. You know? Well, they said, they said off rip there's going to be four or five million available. So, to that's be honest, bro, that's actually kind of like frightening because a lot of people are like, well, what about like the competitive scenes for like that are on console, you know? Right. Like, I don't, is Xbox having a limited release when they drop? I don't think they I are. I don't right? think they are. Let me double check. Yeah. Nah, bro, I think, I think if anything, bro. People might pick up an Xbox low key if there's no PS PlayStation's available. Cause like the way this co- I don't know, I guess COVID's like not being taken seriously as as it was like a couple weeks ago. Cause like dude, I had to go to like four different stores just to pick up a PS4 controller. You know? Yeah. But if it's like calm down since, uh, I think pre-ordering it will be just fine. I don't know. I think I'll be able to get one. Yeah, I think so too. But like, I mean, like I said, I'm gonna wait. Like, I'm gonna wait usually a little bit because, I, I mean, I'm honestly gonna probably buy both consoles eventually at one point just because you know I like having all of them. But yeah. I, I, was, I was look, I was searching out like, looks like Xbox Series X isn't having trouble. The same, the same kind of trouble. Um, oh, a limited release. Yeah, I think the thing about I like about Xbox uh, Series X is like a lot of the games you can already move over from Xbox One, and. Um, like have that that uh, what's it called? Something it's like some kind of delivery service they do. Essentially, you can games that you buy that are compatible to upgrade to the Xbox Series X are you know gonna be there. So yeah. I like that about it. And also, like all your games will be there. But again, I'm probably gonna wait even if, even still just because of the fact of it being uh, not that many games coming out, and it's just it's like almost every console's like that. It's like they only have like a few launch titles, and then it's, I usually wait about. Probably like six months to eight months afterwards, when some games start coming out. No, Just I feel because, that. Yeah, no, there's I've no got, point in getting it right immediately. I've gotten some deals, bro. Like I actually just picked up Borderlands Three because my homeboy was bugging me about it, and it came out like last September, right? Mm-hmm. And I got the Super Deluxe Edition. So there's like four editions: there's regular, there's deluxe, there's Super Deluxe, and then there's Collectors. You know what I'm saying? Which is yeah, the crazy edition, right? The, the, the Ultimate Fan. So I got the Super Deluxe, which is the you know the third. The, what's it called the third highest well technically it's supposed to be the third highest like bundle mm-hmm. so it comes with like the game and all the dlcs plus a couple of extras and what's it called it dude i got it for 40 bucks on amazon Jeez. and it and off rip in september 2019 bro it came out like 100 100 for a couple days and then 120 because they were just doing a small deal on it but yeah dude mm-hmm. that's that's a crazy you know what i'm saying yeah crazy ass deal yeah for sure so waiting a couple months is actually pretty elite 
Yeah, for sure. Because like, I mean, you know, it's like they could in a year they could price drop it, but I doubt they're gonna price drop it a year. <laughs> um, well, who knows? Yeah, who really knows? I mean, I also like to wait for those like those bundle packages, you know? Yeah. Like when they have like they come with like some, like a good game you want or whatnot. Oh, facts, facts, yeah. facts. When it comes out like, let's say it comes out with two controllers and a game and a console. Yeah. Hmm. I respect that. Well, a couple other games. I don't know how much you've. I'll kind of kind of go through these real quick. But there's something called by a Square Enix, uh, Project Athia. Um, oh, did you see that one? I'm pretty sure I did. Um, yeah. which one was it, dude? Was it wait? Was that the one? Like, this is gonna sound like okay. I'm not racist. Okay. <laughs> but this one was like the Caucasian lady, right? I think that you're thinking of Returnal, which is like that that kind of sci-fi looking one. Sure. oh yeah okay there was so there was one where like this like caucasian lady was like fighting aliens by herself right that was yeah pretty just eternal pretty sure oh and then the other one was like some girl in the woods right yeah this that's project Athia. Yeah. the girl in the woods like she's like oh. has like this naturistic powers or something like that and, like there's these like crazy looking wolves and stuff uh um, like that was more like for, for like just showcasing you know what i'm saying yeah that's probably what it was it was, it was probably Perfect. 100 percent probably um what's the word just there just to show the power of the ps5 yeah that's, probably, that's not gonna be your final final pro, final uh, product for sure mm. um but yeah that, was, that looks interesting i mean it's made by square enix and they say it's gonna come out i don't think they gave they gave the release date so it's probably never gonna come out because it's square enix and they never release their games no. <laughs> so highly doubtful um there was the game stray um i think this was the cat <laughs> Uh, oh dude yeah no nah, that is, bro i don't know man like a lot of those titles that like were released they're obviously weren't big titles but like their trailers were like okay so one would think are these indie marketed games like are they like they're just that are just on the ps5 event and it's so weird yeah that if they're having indie games on like like no offense to them but you know there's like a million indie games that come out a year you know for sure so, like, yeah to get those very few, they have to be like really fucking good, you know? Yeah, I mean, it looks weird. I mean, I mean, the kind of thing is like, like about some of these games, this, this stuff is like, a lot of it's just cinematic trailers. And I want to see more gameplay. Like, I can't, yeah. I, I'm never going to, I've learned my hard lesson multiple, multiple times to like not buy games based off the cinematic trailer. Because <laughs> that's just a recipe for, recipe for disaster. Um, Big packs. So, I mean, I, I like to wait till reviews come out, um, especially for games like Last of Us 2. That's coming out in a few days, actually. Uh, I don't know. I know we talked about the leaks, and I got leaked, and I'm kind of like waiting now because, like, I mean, there's a lot of like those, you know, like IGN, all those people like giving out like tens out of tens. I'm like, bro, come on, <laughs> like, right? They're just getting paid under the table, it seems, right? Maybe. Most likely, but like, you know, I'm not gonna say they are, but I'm pretty sure you know some of them are getting paid under the table, and you know, they're just doing that to be within good relations with that developer for early access stuff for continuing on. So yeah. a lot of shills out, but um. Nonetheless, um, Stray's apparently coming next, come out next year, but it just looks kind of weird. To, I don't know. Uh, there's Returnal we talked about uh, that where that woman or the protagonist she gets like she like uh, crash lands on an alien planet. Yeah. And apparently, I didn't I, I, didn't, I didn't watch the full thing, but apparently when she when she, she repeats the same events, including her death, over and over again. However, the planet changes every time she dies. So that's kind of interesting mechanic. That um, is kind of interesting. Not new, but it's it's for it's like kind of like a. Uh, like roguelike kind of kind of games where like things change every time so that's cool you don't play the um, same game. it looks weird. cool but again it's just cinematic so it's like i can't really trust just a cinematic trailer no nah, i don't blame you bro yeah i would not trust cinematic either um let's see here uh there's a new sack boy game coming out but i don't really oh, care yeah. <laughs> big planet. yeah I'm gonna go through a few of these, kind of skip ahead. So one game I did see that I was kind of like, it looked interesting because it was, it was showed back at E3 last year. Um, rest in peace, E3. Um, oh yeah. So is that like, is that chalk like officially or what? I don't think. I think it moved just for this year. I don't think I haven't seen anything saying that it's not gonna be returning next year. But oh, it's not gonna be returning next year. I don't know. I said that. I don't know if it's not returning. Something like that. Oh, okay. You don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, should be coming out. I, I looked it up. People are saying it should be coming out next year, but it might be a little different. Um, I'm gonna do a tangent real quick. But E3 man has been lacking so much these past few years. Or yeah, like 
everything's just a cinematic trailer or like they don't they should title and that's it <laughs> and that's yeah. really un annoying because like oh we're not gonna show you any freaking gameplay at all because you know it's not ready yet like, if it's not ready i don't show it like i want to see gameplay before I make any decision if i'm buying anything big fucking facts bro <laughs> some of these like i forgot what game i saw but like the one thing they need to stop freaking doing it like uh uh reveal events is like show a trailer right and then be like at the very end of that trailer right you're like yo this game looks crazy i hope it comes out soon and it'll be like 2022 2023 it's like bro i'm not gonna remember the title of this game in two three years bro like, you know what i'm saying like yeah if it's not coming out at least next year or at least fall of next year you know what i'm saying then it's like why are you talking about it just save it for next year's event yeah, that's that's for, that's facts. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know like a lot of big thing with E3 is that games comes comes out like like it's like a month later in Germany, and it's like Whoa. oh we want to show too much it's too soon. But it's like, bro, like you're in a <laughs> LA like or so is it San Francisco? Whichever one of those two, I can't tell. But you know what I'm saying? It's like you're like the 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 media center of the world. And, yeah. and, and and you're like everyone's watching E3. Not everyone's watching Gamescom. I mean, a lot of people do watch Gamecom, but I think more people watch E3 than anything. Like, I, I don't see the point of just going out there like and talking about you know a game that's not ready yet, and you're like just kind of like showing a small trailer. I don't know. It just it just my my thing with with E3 that annoys me every time I watch it. I mean, it's yeah. annoyed me since 2018. Like, I was like, okay, they're literally showing this gameplay. They're literally showing cinematics. And all of last year's trailer in 2019 was basically cinematics. But, it's actually insane. Whatever. I'm gonna keep going so like so you don't get too uh, mad. But anyways, I was gonna talk about um so this game was shown up by Bethesda and Tango Gameworks back in E3 2019. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. Um, Never did, heard I did, of it. So it's it, it's kind of weird. Like so at E3 E3 um uh at E3 it kind of um showed like it was like the 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 vibe of the game. It was very much like Silent Hill almost. Um, okay. like the cinematic it, it looked really kind of like horror-esque yeah because um, like there's like people disappearing and just you know strange visual effects um but now kind of looking at the video it looks kind of like it's like a hyper action game first person like you have like a, you have like powers you can like you know like fire and lightning and whatever um and i mean i looked a little i saw a little game a little of the gameplay it looks like special gameplay that's a good thing um but yeah. it just it just looked kind of like Eh, a little, I don't know. It's a lot different than I was expecting, you know. I expect yeah. some kind of, um, some kind of like mystery, mystery, and uh, you know. But it turned out to be some hyper action, which is fine. Like I think first person, there's not a lot of hyper action first person games out there that you know that exist. And I hope this is pretty good because it's made by some pretty good people at at Tango GameWorks. A lot of them worked on Silent Hill, so they're talented people, of course. So I don't know. We'll see. Comes out for PS5. Apparently, also it's gonna be a timed exclusive for PS5. Which is kind of exclusive, like the like day one drop, or um, I think it's gonna be exclusive for PS5. Yeah, let's see here. This is also will be low launching on PC. Only one says mm. when that's coming out. It looks interesting, but regardless, um, so that's that. So Ghost Warrior Tokyo, I think I'm kind of said like they're doing. Time exclusive. I think time exclusives are so dumb. If you're like a, if you don't work for Sony themselves, you know, <laughs> it yeah. kind of makes everyone mad at you. Are like you the whole, um, you know, remember the whole, the whole thing with Modern Warfare with like time exclusive the, uh, the survival mode and it's still going on, you know. Oh wait, are time? Oh, oh wait, wait, time exclusives? Do you mean like it's only exclusive to like this console or this like yeah. PC? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, okay. Time exclusive. Yeah, it'll like... be exclusive for like a year or so, then it will launch on. Oh, on I, PC. okay. So, the, so that's why it's called time exclusive. Okay. Yeah. Nah, bro. I'm not gonna cap. I didn't know what that like what you were you, <laughs> saying that, dude. I was that's like, good. yo, this, this sounds mad foreign. To me. But then, okay, <laughs> I, get what, I get what you mean now. Yeah. But yeah, so. time exclusives are kind of stupid, bro. You may as like people. It just makes people mad and complain. They're like, bro, I spent all this money on this console and this game I want. Like the developers, like, nah, bro, you can't have this till you can't have the full game until like a year later. That's yeah. kind of messed up. Yeah, I think they did, they did with Borderlands Three. I think it was a six month time exclusive, but Borderlands Three did that. Um, then also, uh, Metro their last Metro Exodus game did that as well, like a year long exclusive for 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 game, it could be game studio, but then eventually came out on Steam. 
So, as See, a... man, I don't know. I feel like if the developers, or not developers, like the big name companies, like you know, beyond developers like Sony and Microsoft, just take the stick out of their asses and you know, just put, made a, a couple, a couple more games crossplay. Yeah. Then maybe they would, uh, you know, they wouldn't have to, like, you know, make these consoles seven, eight hundred dollars. But who knows how much the price is? I don't know how much it is. I'm just speculating. I'm expecting it to be five hundred, six hundred dollars, probably somewhere around there. That's my guess. See, the specs are kind of nasty. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I, I, they're not more powerful than your, you know, a powerful PC. <laughs> no, yeah. obviously not. Yeah, they can't but be I'm that. Like the specs, at least, are like range around six hundred dollars. Yeah, it's just kind of, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to talk much about console, but like, you know. They're expensive pieces of, of, of hardware for sure. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. I, I I mean, a lot of them are going to be, be hoping on you hoping. I think what they what they did say this though, like I think PS Five is going to be selling at a loss. At a loss. Like, Damn. They're, but the thing is, they're hoping because of you know like paying for PS. Uh, what is it called? PS Live. PlayStation PS, Plus. PlayStation Plus. Taking PS my Plus. head. Xbox fanboys. I know. <laughs> <laughs> PS Plus. I couldn't think of it. Um, PS Plus account and also like you know buying games from them and you know they'll eventually make their money back you know from you you know buying PS Plus and eventually products yeah. from them from them so because they like think I think it's a better business strategy than like selling the console super high to either to break even or make a profit you know make I guess it makes sense I mean, if it's worked for them so far I mean that works um, but I think also the Xbox the Xbox Series X is a more powerful console, just like a little bit more powerful than the Ooh. PS5. So moving on, um, next game that I kind of like want to talk about is uh, Hitman 3. Um, oh yeah, I saw that trailer. Pretty elite. Yeah. elite. I've only played Hitman Absolution, and that was the only Hitman game I've played so far, like ever. I think I played on 360 and then never played it ever again. I don't know, it was a cool yeah. game. It's a pretty, pretty dope game. Um, 360 was a minute ago, brother. Yeah, I know. This is back. I've never touched it. Might have been back in 2013 or 2014, one of those years. That's when Damn, I played bro. first place. Fred played it, and it was fun. It's pretty cool. Um, nonetheless, uh, oh, I suppose it looks like it's going to be concluding the actual uh, series, the, re the rebooted trilogy. Um, oh. which, whatever that means, I don't know what the rebooted tr trilogy is. Um, rebooted trilogy. That's tough. Last few games here, so I got four I want to talk about. Um, so, Demon Souls. Um, mm. It looks really good. <laughs> um, essentially, it's, a, it's the, the first Dark Souls, but like not Dark Souls, you know? Mm. This is the game before Dark Souls. It came back on PS3. I think it's like one of the launch title for PS3. I hear um, Dark Souls and my skin crawls, okay? <laughs> you don't like it? I'm not a fan of like these type games. Like, the ones where like it just feels like like you know back in the day when they had like those like corny ass like cartoon episodes where someone's like fighting a demon or something and like mm -hmm. the person's just trying their hardest to beat that that's it it, it gives me uh like memories of that and it's just not good memories <laughs> okay well this game i've never played and I've, I've always wanted to play it but seeing it's getting a ps5 uh PS5 remaster. I mean, it's more like it's more like a nice remaster. It looks like it's completely like remade from like the ground up. Like all the Word. the visuals look really solid for PS5. Um, it's kind of sad. It's not like Elden Ring because I really wanted that game to come out. But Demon Souls, I, I guess, know. will be a game that I can hold me over until that time comes. Um, yeah. But I never played it. I heard it's like one of the one of the best like games that uh, From Software has made. So, well, we'll see when it comes out. I think it's coming out. I don't know. I think it, it doesn't say here. I think it's probably. I'd imagine like next year or maybe it's a launch title. I don't know. Um, for up. sure, we'll got see. You, got you. I'm Google it. Uh, power Google. Yeah, look it up. See if we can get it. Release date is gonna be for the heck. Okay, never mind. Remaster. My fault. <laughs> You're good. I say like 2013, 2012, <laughs> 2011. Hmm. <laughs> I think it says, ooh, dang, I have no idea. Yeah, what I don't say here anywhere. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm going like to guess 2021. 2021. Yeah, same. I'm going to guess same. 2021. So, for sure. 
Um, another game we'll talk about is kind of showcased after that, so Deathloop. Um, Death so Deathloop Loop. is made by Arcane Studios. They're the ones who did uh, Dishonored, and they did uh, Prey. And okay, I, so notable studio. Yeah, pretty good studio. I, their games are great. Um, I love. I've, I've uh, actually can't say that, <laughs> but uh, their games are great. I played Dishonored one and two. I played Prey. I haven't beat that game because it's freaking. It's hard. I don't know. It's hard to me. Um, yeah. But the game looks pretty cool because it's um it has this interesting um it's kind of like kind of like that game uh also it's interesting to make like if you die it's like a it's like a loop you start the you start the day all over again so you can keep oh. going back and forth and yeah it's another first person first person stealth game and the art style looks pretty cool actually um, I actually like the gameplay of this no I I remember watching this I I didn't remember the name of it but the what's it called gameplay of it is actually nasty it looks pretty solid. Yeah. Um, the art style is pretty cool too. So, um, I think you play as two different characters. Uh, like, like there's like a man and woman you can play as. Yeah. Um, and you kind of keep killing each other. So. Head ass. Uh, like, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, dude. Okay. You know, there's like special powers you can do, and so it's uh oh, it looks pretty cool. I just think the um the aesthetic's pretty dope. Like kind of like yeah. the other other games has that same kind of similar style, but you know, aesthetic looks pretty cool um so i'm excited yeah, for that i hate know. that's i hate that's a freaking ps5 time exclusive also but oh, wait. i really play on pc so like the dlc is like for what what, what specifically, DLC? What, uh, what specifically is exclusive to it i don't think just yeah. the uh the, it's just gonna be like probably sony and bethesda had a deal and you know it's gonna be oh, okay. exclusive. yeah so it won't be on pc for a while is what i'm hearing yeah, apparently. Oh. I, I might be wrong. Maybe like it's launching alongside, but who freaking knows? <laughs> yeah, um, no, this, this kind of reminds me of Bioshock. Like when I saw it, I was like, "Yo, this game is actually kind of dope mm -hmm. looking." But yeah, it looks again, pretty cool. Cinematics can, uh, you know, what I'm saying. Well, it looks like there's some fair amount of gameplay in here. I mean, it's like a lot of like probably like extremely uh, cinematic gameplay. You know what I'm saying? Like everything's yeah. kind of like set in place perfectly. So, but I don't know. I mean, it looks looks cool. I think it'll be pretty fun, um, but we'll wait until uh, I think it's coming out twenty twenty one. I'm gonna imagine, or maybe like the, maybe like I'm thinking probably, I'll say probably March because usually Bethesda, since Arcane's underneath them, um, they usually release like a big title around like May or April. Yeah, and then because I don't know if like because um, I don't think what's his what's the face because they're because Bethesda is releasing Starfield their new skin coming out pretty soon but I don't know when that's coming out it could be November who knows so yeah. I, I would expect this game to come back around May that's when Prey and uh, I think Dishonored 1 came out around so mm. no no we'll see for sure um two more games we'll talk about uh Resident Evil Village or Resident Evil 8 Dude, um, that game nasty I actually might cop that game but probably gonna wait for a discount yeah I mean it looks looked the aesthetic was really, really, really creepy. Um, interesting enough, it's going back to uh, first person, like Resident Evil Seven was the game before. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I didn't play. I have not played Resident Evil Seven. I have it in my Steam library. I just haven't downloaded and played it. I played Resident Evil Two, the remake. Um, haven't beat that one yet, unfortunately. I've played most of it. But I mean, Resident Evil's pretty dope. <laughs> um, and for Resident Evil Seven is really fun and was really highly uh, acclaimed by critics and users alike. So, but this one looks interesting. It's very gross, very um, scary. Hopefully, it's it's scary, not just like you know, full on action. It, but when uh, when it first dropped, I was like thinking to myself, I was like, wait, like I didn't know what game it was, and until I saw like the Resident Evil symbol like randomly in the trailer, I'm like, bro, that's Resident Evil for sure. And like I was watching it with a couple people, and people uh, there's people in the chat going, "No, nah, there's no way that's Resident Evil, no way." <laughs> and then they, they they're like, "Resident Evil Village." I'm like, "Bro, ooh, smoked." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I like how like I couldn't tell what game it was because uh, mm -hmm. I mean that's just how versatile you know what's it called that those developers are. Yeah. So I, I think that's actually pretty cool, and I'm you know looking pretty forward to pre-ordering that game. Yeah, hey, well, uh, maybe yeah, pre-ordering. Yeah, maybe pre-ordering it. I don't know what's. I think it's coming out uh, 2021, so next oh, year. Not too far minute. away. So yeah. Um, 
If we survive Unless... 2020. Yeah, we do, hopefully. Um, so lastly, thing, last thing, the last thing was shown um, game-wise was uh, the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn, or I like to call it Sony's Legend of Zelda, <laughs> essentially. Damn. Um, no, that's, a, that's like a dog on it. Like, that's actually a compliment, you know? Um, yeah. I never played Horizon Zero Dawn originally. I'm probably going to wait until it comes on PC before I play it, because um, it's coming up pretty soon on PC. Um, See, I'm not, not going to lie. I looked at the game, and I thought it was a... Bro, no, I don't know why, but for some reason, I thought it was like an Xbox exclusive when I first saw it. Really? But it, yeah. No, nah, I think it's because like, I, I was like looking for an Xbox at the time, and there was like a bunch of uh, Sunset Overdrive, right? Oh, right? yeah. That's the same uh, thing, right? I'm like Sunset Catholic. Overdrive? I mean, might, it might be. I don't know. <laughs> Is that in the series? Ooh. Sunset Overdrive different? and Horizon Zero Dawn? Yeah, that's no. two different, two different, two different games. Two different games. Right? Yeah, two different yeah. Games. <laughs> I'm tripping, bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my fault. My fault. You're good. Uh, but yeah, what's it called? It, the gameplay wasn't that bad. It's cartoonish, which is mm-hmm. which is good. Yeah, I might have to try it out because I've never played the first one, and I like I like if it's like anything like Breath of the Wild, um, then I'll fall in love with it immediately because Breath of the Wild, that's like one of my favorite games of 28, 2017. Yeah. See that so. game right there. That yeah. That, that, everyone loved that game, bro. Like yeah. every nerd had a switch, like just <laughs> in class playing that game. I mean, that was the most hyped yeah. launch title like of recent recent time. Because I remember like that game was in development for like five, six, or, six, six or five or six years, like that. Crazy, and like bro. we kept hearing like a little bit of every now and then, every now and then, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then eventually they showed the trailer and like, oh, it's probably not coming out like Christmas or like 2018 and then it's like March whatever the launch title I think it was March 17th for 2017 or whatever I can't yeah. remember the launch date but it was like launch title like that's like the biggest launch title you could have for for, for a Nintendo console that was yeah. hype I was hyped for that too and that was like the first game I bought when I got my Switch was Breath of the Wild it's a great game I've, I need to go back and right. beat, it, beat it again because it's so so good and, re- and re- replayable so um so yeah, that's all the games. Like I really, I really like kind of what kind of like showed it to me. I mean, we could have gone back to NBA Two K Twenty One, but it's like the same thing every year. Yeah, um, it literally is. Yeah, I don't <laughs> play like sports games. It's not yeah. the point. Um, and they did. They did show the console. There's gonna be two consoles coming out. Um, so they had the one was the oh, digital yeah. edition, and then just and the, the regular PS Five. The one for disc and the one for digital. Yeah. See, I think that's smart. Sony always tries to be a step ahead of Xbox, and so Xbox is just straight digital, right? <laughs> I think Xbox has, uh, Series X has the. Does it? Has, let me oh, see. It. I look at it. I think it has a disk drive. Oh, yeah, it has a disk it, drive. Oh, mm-hmm. it does. Oh, so. Yeah. Only just being extra. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm, if I were to buy one, I'm probably gonna buy the digital one just because you know I buy basically all my games digitally now. Yeah. It just you know it doesn't make sense. I have like a whole bunch of like disc every now and then, like all all over the place, because I mean other there's the um. There's the uh, argument that oh you don't really own your games though if you have them digitally, you basically have the rights. You basically bought the rights to play that game. At <laughs> us. So it's like I mean, uh, I guess, but it's like I mean I like some like the physical like unless you're getting like a um a physical like special edition you know that has like a lot of stuff that comes with it. Yeah. I can see why you get the we get the, the physical copy, but I don't see the point because like literally when you buy a game for the disc in, you're, you're going to download something. You're going to download it. <laughs> oh, one thousand percent, yeah. So it's just easy to just wake Skip up. Skip a whole process. Yeah, and just like, all right, bro. And besides, if you break your disc, bro, like that's it. Yeah, that's true. Like, like with digital, it's like, all right, you break your console, bro. You can literally buy another console and just re-download it. Yeah. My thing with um, with the whole like uh. Oh man, I was forgetting my points I make. Um, I was gonna say something like how, like you know, buying buying a disc again like, just takes the space. Oh man, oh yeah, here we go. I was gonna say this. Um, I like to like go out and like support like you know like businesses buying discs from them, like you know Best Buy or whatever yeah. kind of nearby stores nearby, just because like you buy everything off of. Uh, also, you can return them too, I guess, with with buying a disc as well. There's you can return in, in a certain amount yeah. of time. Thing, that's the best thing, thing too. Right. So, I wish I wish they had a return policy on on the the, 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 the uh, storefronts for games like you know Xbox stores or the PS the PS store or whatever on you know PS4 yeah. or whatever. But they don't because they they basically control everything. So <laughs> you gotta. That's Switch why I said up. review your watch reviews of games before you make your purchase. You make sure you really want that game. <laughs> Gee, that's why I like buy physical copies, and I make sure not to have my like debit card on my PlayStation account because bro people. 
Oh, I've some, I always see people on the TL complaining. Oh, I bought this game by accident, or oh man, damn, I can't really return this game even though I bought it. You know what I'm saying? Like online, yep. and it's like, like bro, I I don't I don't want that, bro. I don't want to be like sixty dollars short because I bought a game because the cinematics were, were elite and the gameplay wasn't. Yeah. I don't know. Well, um, so overall, talking about the PS5 reveal, um, I thought it was pretty good compared to Xboxes. Um, they showed, I mean, again, it's kind of okay because if you look at the um, comparing, like, because remember, the X, I think we talked about this last time, Xbox the Series X, um, the Series X gameplay, quote unquote, uh, yeah. reveal was not gameplay at all, just cinematics and, you know, in game engine stuff. But um, at least on PS5, they show gameplay for a few of their, their titles coming up. So I can appreciate that at least. Yeah, I can always um, appreciate watching uh, trailers. Yeah, I mean, that was fine for what, for what it was set out to do and um what do you oh yeah what do you think of the, the design we have to talk about this design of the ps5 how are you feeling on that well the memes were glorious yeah okay? were. That, is, that is first of all second of all i don't know it looks kind of like futuristic like when i first saw it i had mixed feelings about it because like like a lot of people obviously aren't fans of like because you know historically there's the you know the PlayStation has always been like a completely you know, solid outside, like black console, mm-hmm. it's like just to be generic about it, like to have it to have it that new like like you still they're still staying with all the primary colors obviously yeah like blue white and black, but having like white is that primary color, it just looks like like something out of like a like a movie or something, like you expect like I feel like. I feel like I'm supposed to like walk into my room, you know, and my room is supposed to have like all white walls, all white furniture, just to compliment the PlayStation 5 being in that room. That's what it felt like to me looking at it. It is but, very much different. Um, yeah. Like much, much different. Like, I mean, you can say Xbox Series X is a lot different. It's like just a big old, big old white brick. <laughs> Dude, um, it really is a brick, bro. I, I think I read something how they're with this, in, in designing this thing, they want to like make it look like it's like futuristic. You know, it's actually like yeah. something you'd see in 2020. Like if you were like, you know, so like 15 years ago, like, oh, what's 2020 console gonna look like? And so like this would pop up in their heads. So yeah, it's very different. I, I can appreciate the, the the boldness of it being like you know, the rather right yeah. the traditional black. I I imagine you're probably gonna make this a traditional black um, version. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have no doubt they're gonna do that. But I, I can, I'm kind of excited to see a lot of the the uh, collector's edition stuff PS5s are gonna have with different yeah. games and all that. Um, oh, the skins are gonna be crazy. Yeah, but it's it's. Uh, I mean, I like I just saw this in a minute ago. I like how the picture, like this thing's gonna be huge. Like it's gonna be bigger than the Xbox Series X. Like it's gonna be taller than that. <laughs> um, Is that wait? The specs say it's gonna be taller than the Xbox Series X. Apparently, let me show you. I'll put this picture in the Discord. You're gonna, you're gonna get a kick out of this. It's massive. Comparing like, because like people have been comparing um, the disk drive sizes. Here you go, and upload. PS5. Wait, what? Oh, it's taller. Yeah, it's taller. What? Mind blown. <laughs> that is if you have the disk drive. That makes me a little. It's be a little, little, little slimmer if you get the one with the digital edition. Yeah. But that's a big boy right there. <laughs> I think it's massive. But nonetheless, it's um, it is for sure. I think it's cool design. I think I like it. Like honestly, I, th- I think it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. If I were to get one, I'd probably get the digital, just because, like I said, I'm, I don't buy discs anymore. I just don't usually don't like to buy discs. But if I buy the digital, uh-huh. I'm never gonna buy a disc again, obviously. Um, so I think like comparing designs, I think all the PS5 is better in the design because of just it's not like a big old rectangular brick. <laughs> yeah. It actually dude. has some some style to it you know looks nice like you um, can vandalize a shop with a xbox series x every time though <laughs> to be being honest ex- being an expensive brick but i don't know well nonetheless like i said overall i think the event was was better than xbox and a good event overall from what i've seen um i'll probably eventually go back and go watch the entire thing but from the highlights i saw it was pretty good so yeah i gotta watch the xbox reveal uh, what's it called Whoa, the uh, series x like gameplay yeah, I didn't. I didn't see that. I missed that one. But I. You're disappointed. 
Really? Damn. I, I watched yeah. the PlayStation one and like it was a bunch of cinematics. And like a couple of those games look kind of cool. There's a little bit of nostalgia in there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Ratchet and Clank, uh, Spider Man, and a couple other titles that look pretty interesting. Like I've never heard yeah. of. Like, like the Instruction All Stars that's coming out. Like a bunch of those titles during the PlayStation uh, 5 reveal event was, was pretty elite. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still gonna watch the Xbox One just so you know. What I'm saying like I have like a biased opinion on mm-hmm. you know future purchases. Yeah, I think my thing is I was gonna kind of like closing this um, was that there was a um, a comment saying like, like these games look great, like you know, like all the cinematics and stuff. But yeah, are they really something like mind blowing like you haven't seen before on PS4 or, or Xbox One? You know, do like, right. I mean, it, it, like, it, I mean, we've got to the point again. We're kind of like, a, like at a peak, like the peak of the hill of like in graphic fidelity, like where we're at in gaming. Yeah. I mean, there's something we can't go. We even really, we can't go much higher than what we've already seen. Um, I don't know. It's like, I think like it's like, whoa, we couldn't do that on a PS4. Oh, we could do that on an Xbox One. You know, like I feel yeah. like a lot of the stuff could have done that. Maybe they say for like Ratchet and Clank, like doing the fast loading stuff like that. Because usually that'd be like a cutscene or a, a loading screen in, in different places. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I'm still yet to really be impressed with anything, like, with anything like, visually. But like, you know, I, I don't know. It, it just seems like for me, like, nothing has changed enough for me to like, oh yeah, I need to get one of those things right now. This is mind blowing. Um, yeah, dude. We like in this digital age, we just need like, like more and more than what's given it to us. Like, when they capped it, like, I don't know. Like, so one of the specs that I found kind of interesting was that there instead of doing like 144 i feel like 144 hertz would be you know what i'm saying at least compatible or well not compatible comparable to a pc, PC like console yeah. or pc but them capping it at 120 it was kind of weird i mean i get it it probably more than likely for like price rate range or whatever mm-hmm. but i would rather them you know just say fuck it and try to compete with pc you know because they have 16 gigs of ram right they're probably gonna have like a terabyte of ssd yeah. and they're gonna have all these crazy aspects but that like but you know frames you know visually like people aren't gonna people aren't gonna look at a console and go oh wow 16 gigs of ram they're gonna look at a console and go 144 fps or 144 hertz that's what i signed up for you know what i'm saying yeah like, that's what i feel like is a will be a really major selling point mm-hmm. but then again i don't know my my thing is like i kind of said this last time but like you know, I think more people are looking for frame rate rather than graphics. You know, nice. um, especially when it comes to competitive games. Um, because, so, like, my, my 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 thing is like for buying a console. If I ever buy another one, which I'm probably going to, um, yeah, I want to like, I want to know the frame rate caps. I want to know how much storage is going to be on this. Oh, that's another, that's another topic we can talk about eventually. But of how I guess talk about it now. Uh, we'll come to, I'll get to it in a second. But I guess storage capacity is a big thing too. Because I want to make sure I can have all my games on there. I'm having to keep extending my freaking hard drives, um, and then uh, if my friends are which which consoles my friends are getting, you know, and the types of games for sure. Like what guy, what kind of exclusive games are we getting for each of those consoles? Um, I'll say this real quick because uh, I don't want to go too long, but the whole uh, is it kind of crazy how like how big some games are like without being compressed? Yeah, like, I think we talked about this like with with um with with modern warfare how it was it's almost um, 200 gigs dude yeah like and we're then, like it's such a joke <laughs> there was like an update for supposedly like the last update that dropped like maybe like a week or so mm-hmm. like um some of the some people were experiencing 84 gigabyte downloads that's and it's stupid. just like bro what it's like that's we dumb. waited for like this season four to drop right but 84 gigs that's literally like that's that's way too much space for for an update that's like, like that's not even a game dude that's well, like that's eight eight indie games right game. there <laughs> yeah, that's more than a game that's crazy more like, maybe like 10 indie games but nonetheless like, well like i hope i hope this isn't the standard when it comes to like next gen consoles nah, that's my concern too because like even like now yeah. it's like some games are let me look at let me see the one game one game here uh look at my steam library let's see, look at doom eternal let's do that um yeah. how many gigs is this it's like 43 gigs. That's not too bad. 43 gigs that's is not, actually not bad. Yeah, that's, that's not unreasonable. Um, but like if I look at Destiny, look at something like Destiny 2. Oh man. How many gigs is this? 92 gigabytes. That's, really, <laughs> that's kind of ridiculous. 
a tenth of a terabyte right there. Like, I don't know. I think a lot of the, hopefully they put a lot of money into compression because compression I know does take time and it does take a lot of money to do that. But like, yeah. I don't. Know. You need to have some some realistic standards for for things. I don't think a game should be more than like fifty gigs ever. Oh, big facts. I mean, Never 50 gigs? gigs. I mean, that's that's a lot. You're, you're I'm saying that even more than that. Like that's like the, like the yeah. limit it should be at. But anyway, um, that's all I got. I think it's all we really have time for today. Um, but to all you guys listening, thanks for listening to the Peripheral Podcast. I'm glad you enjoyed the show, and we hope to see you guys next time. Uh, we'll be back pretty soon, hopefully in a week. Our schedule's a little little roughed, but yeah, same. we'll get in the swing of things. So schedule uh, is mad. Anyway, scuffed. Yeah, for sure. I was definitely scuffed for these past few weeks. But nonetheless, uh, hope to see you guys again back next time. My name's Grant, my co-host Brian, and we will yes, see sir. you guys next time. I'm out. Peace, brothers. All right, cool. Jeez. Dude, I got a time. You know.